one thing that I learned throughout my experience with a narcissistic person is that it is so infectious. I mean, this stuff is more infectious than coronavirus. Hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo. Welcome to my channel. Hey, yo, hey, yo. Listen up. Listen up. Listen up. Listen up. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, the original wireless woman, welcoming you back to our spot room 303. If you are new, welcome to the crew, but my returnees, you know what we do. If you like this video, well then like this video. Let the comments reveal how you really feel and if you're feeling a vibe we'll go ahead on and subscribe but before you blink share this link welcome wi-fi's to the first cult of personality episode of season two of the wireless woman as i said this is going to be a series that will continue to evolve i am not abandoning it and today we will be talking about personality by numbers a lot of people may not be aware but the narcissistic personality is not one continuous thing it is an amalgamation a collection a haberdashery if you will of different characteristics and personality traits so before i get too far into today's content you already know what time it is what are we gonna do tomorrow night the same thing we do every night pinky try to take over the world it is time to call the roll. so i need everyone who is still concerned about how we crack the code of the bullies in our society to the front of the class because it is time to read aloud shit you in charge of the girls right i am in charge of the girls are you in charge of the girls i am in charge of the girls okay all right welcome back wi-fi's to another episode of the wireless woman today we will be working from our cult of personality series and this series focuses all on narcissistic antagonistic personality types we'll be talking about personality by numbers but before we get into today's content do me a favor on your way in and like this video why because when you like it well i love it make sure you subscribe to this channel <laughs> Go ahead and leave me that fire headphones emoji in the comments and click the notification button so that you will be alerted when I go live because that is something I'm going to do a whole lot more of in this season and you want to be there. You want to know all about it when it happens. So personality by numbers, what exactly does that mean? Well, in the world of narcissistic personality disorder, a lot of times these people don't have what we would consider a consistent personality, you know, belief systems that line up with the way that they live their lives, you know, morality, and all of these things working together to cre create a composite personality. Instead, we are dealing with a person who is a able to change their entire personality to suit the situation that they are in. Now, this is particularly problematic because we live in a society where narcissism is becoming ever increasingly prevalent. Now, most of these people will never go into treatment or seek out any type of assessment of their personality. So for the most part, they will go throughout their lives and throughout society completely undetected, spreading their toxicity wherever they go. Now, I get it. We want to be unconditionally loving and kind and empathetic and compassionate towards people. However, these people are bent towards the psychological and emotional destruction of people that they feel to be their opposition. These, these are oppositionally defiant people and no attempt on our part to deal with their illness through 
our therapeutic ways are going to be effective. We have to learn about these people and study and create ways to be effective and defensive of our own emotional health. Because one thing that I learned throughout my experience with a narcissistic person is that it is so infectious. I mean, this stuff is more infectious than coronavirus. It is something that gets in you and changes you on a molecular level. We have to be meek as a dove, but still cunning as a serpent. It's very important that you understand the wiles of people. Now, you may not see this person as an enemy, but rest assured that they see you as one and are always working an angle to have one leg up on you. Learning about narcissism and how to affect as much change in your environment as possible is the best thing that you can do for narcissistic people. They have to be held accountable. They have to constantly be brought back to that realm of reality. Now, keep in mind, it is much like trying to wake a sleepwalker. It does more often than not backfire on you to try to live in reality with them than to live in their fantastic cognitive dissonance. And a lot of times because that fantasy place is something that we all want to have, especially as women, we all want that fairy tale of, you know, the prince and the knight and the horse and the chariot taking you away. And a narcissistic person can offer you that intermittently, but it's not worth sacrificing your reality, you know, having real love, compassion and empathy from someone who is emotionally healthy enough and emotionally regulated enough to sustain that. And I think we have to burst that bubble of thinking that that fantasy is real at times as well. And I talked about that in my episode about shared fantasy, because a lot of us have a very unrealistic view of what love and relationships are. Just like they say, it's only a happy ending depending on where you stop the story. You know, if we watch Cinderella and Prince Charming all the way out until their 80s and he's an old man with liver spots and she's having to change a diaper on him, you know, it's not so glamorous. That is what we sign up for in our relationships with people. To have someone who sits at the bedside in the hospital, to have a person who's willing to work that overtime because you lost that job, to have a person who's with you if a child or a parent dies, this is what relationships are, you know, and hopefully you get to have some fun on the beach, you know, go take some island trips and do all of those things. But those fun, exciting, exhilarating parts of your relationship are a byproduct of the deep, enduring loyalty and fidelity that you have. And we all deserve that. We deserve to have something that is real, tangible, enduring, and consistent with a person that we love and care about. And a person who we know has the capacity to love and care about us in return. The narcissistic personality is more often than not a composite of different character traits that they have encountered in other people and liked. You know, here's the thing, that person will mirror you and you can reference my episode on emotional mirroring and learn who you are and what you like and what it is that other people like about you. Narcissists tend to be attracted to people who are very attractive or very magnetic and that other people tend to like and they do that in order to harvest your personality traits. Not all psychopaths are narcissists. Not all narcissists are psycho or sociopaths. However, a lot of them do have psychopathic or sociopathic traits. And to whatever level they have these other underlying personality traits, you'll see the narcissism come out in different ways. Like the covert narcissist is a lot more sociopathic. They're able to actually mimic the emotions of other people in order to manipulate emotions. More often than not with psychopaths, they don't have the capacity to understand or to mirror your emotions. So that's where you see that malignant narcissist who kind of just lives inside their own feelings and don't see anyone else's. Whereas a covert narcissist can convince you that they have what we call cold empathy, that they're able to actually make you feel like they care 
whether they do or not. So with this personality by numbers, you're more often than not dealing with a more covert narcissist. Those are the kind that I've encountered more than malignant narcissists. I'm what they call a truth teller child. So my quotient of reality and truth is too high to really fully be engrossed in a relationship with a malignant narcissist. Some people are much more meek, are much more compliant, submissive than I am and are able to quell the antagonism of the malignant narcissist long enough to maintain a relationship with them, but I, not me so much. More often than not, I am the end of a game for a covert narcissist. So as I'm learning more and more about how these people move, it allows me to have a lot more discretion in my relationships with people that I'm meeting because they are so charming up front. They're so like you. You know, you just feel like you met your soulmate when you're dealing with a covert narcissist more often than not. So what they do with every encounter with you is pick out these personality traits that make them a more attractive and pleasant and agreeable person. This is also the reason why a lot of these narcissists have to have so many relationships. You'll notice that they have, if they're a man, they'll have a large group of female friends and it can be one of those things. It's like, why do you need so many female friends? Well, they want to be attractive to women. So you got to kind of poll a group of women. And we're seeing so much of this covert narcissism with a lot of men nowadays because of social media. You don't even have to go out and procure a group of women to adore you. You can just put forth a persona on social media and build a following. You know, we're seeing that with these manosphere men and all these different things where, you know, they're neat and pressed and they look the part and all kind of bullshit coming out their mouth. But they look the part. And because it's appealing, it's like what Eve saw. She saw that the fruit was good for food and appealing to the eye. It's like, well, I mean, it's good and it's evil. I'll eat it. You know, we have to learn as women that not everything that looks good is good because the Bible also goes on to say that the woman was deceived, but the man was not. Men deal in a realm of logic. So when you're dealing with an overly emotionally dysregulated man, more often than not, you're dealing with a narcissist. And society has bent itself towards narcissistic people. And that can be a really difficult space to be in because when you try to point that person out, like something's not quite right here, people are like, but it looks the part. And because it looks the part, that must be what it is. We can't call this part. We can't label this person anything other than what they identify as because that, even though this is the reality, that would in some way impede on their right to be whatever it is that they want to be. So it's like I said, everything in this society lends itself towards giving these people more and more and more gravitas. And it's creating an antagonistic society where we have to deal with these people in so many different arenas that it's draining a lot of people get health conditions because they're they're tied indelibly to people who are changing their personality minute by minute to suit all of these different situations. So because a narcissist is consistently looking for that affirmation from people that are out here in the world, you as their intimate partner or as a person who may not necessarily be feeding into this narrative are going to be the target. If you are the person that's pointing out that the emperor is wearing no clothes, just know that you're going to see a side of that person that no one else is experiencing, which is further going to alienate you and your claims about that person, which is why we can never get caught up in trying to out these people, trying to convince other people that they're not who they say they are, laying traps for them. All of this is something that 
people who are in relationships with these narcissists get pulled into. You know, you spend a bunch of time recording conversations, you know, taking screenshots of text messages and all these different things to try to prove that you're not a crazy person. Meanwhile, looking like a crazy person. And right now we're in a space in the divine feminine where we don't have the energy we just, we're in an energy crisis. We do not have the energy to take an offensive fight to these people. So we're going to have to learn how to be unplugged, unbothered, and unleashed to our potential. You know, if you are busy running all around the mulberry bush with someone who is ultimately just learning how to manipulate and control you with all of the information that you're giving them about who you are as a person. I mean, we put tons of information on the internet. You know, my name is, I'm from, I like long walks on the beach. I'm a cancer. And all of these profiles and narcissists are able to profile us like a dating app would and match you with people who have similar interests and similar Life is made up of being able to interact with people that are different from you, not so that you can be like them or envious of them, but so that you can have experiences that are outside of what maybe you would seek out simply because this person is different from you. They have different views. They have different opinions. A narcissist isn't capable of regulating their own emotions enough to stand in the integrity of who they are, no matter what the situation is. But you are you're that courageous you're that independent you're that spirited you're that intelligent and you don't need to bring yourself down to the level of someone who's not even a real boy i mean you're dealing with pinocchio you're dealing with peter pan you're dealing with someone who is manipulating the environment manipulating their personality manipulating your responses you can look at my video about rage harvesting where once that person learns how to push your buttons they can get you in front of people looking like a crazy person as we continue to move forward learning about the techniques and tactics of these narcissists i'm hoping that it will help us to unplug and disengage when we see these personality types you know it's important for us to guard our peace and our energy so that we're always giving our best to the healthy relationships that we have because you're only as good as your practice. You know, whatever you practice, you perfect. So if we want to be loving, kind, compassionate people, we have to have the discretion and discernment in our personal lives to pick like-minded people, not people that completely agree with us and don't challenge us or hold us accountable, but people who at least have a goal of having a healthy relationship with us. We've got to learn how to be able to pick those people and you're not going to see a needle if you cover it with a haystack. So until the next episode, I am as always your girl Debbie and Nikki, your neighborhood wireless woman. Do me a favor if you are ready to be unbothered about these toxic, antagonistic, combative people in your lives, just drop that fire headphones emoji in my comments and until the next episode class is now dismissed all right thanks for sticking with me until the very end of this episode if you like today's content you might want to check out this episode right here and if you haven't go ahead and subscribe to my channel by clicking this link here and until the next time stay unplugged unbothered and unleashed